Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> we are here. We are actually, we only just met yesterday and mm -hmm. we are here. So happy by serendipity for the Work Your Light Oracle deck activation. Mm -hmm. And yay. <laughs> We're so excited. Danielle and I have been. Um, obviously working together for quite a while on this and yeah so it was kind of surreal to actually meet in person yesterday yeah. <laughs> it felt like a blind date and yet a remembering yeah, <laughs> lots of awkward giggling <laughs> <laughs> yes lots of past lives you're oh. right oh so let us know where everyone's calling or tuning in from we've got yorkshire kent oh. canada <laughs> ireland belgium chicago wow. oh my gosh houston texas oh my gosh wow. we are traveling around the world with the speed of light right now <laughs> oh so amazing bournemouth liverpool oh well we just are so happy well yeah. to be in the same room yeah. and to be connecting with everyone here yeah absolutely a blessing to it's here. really special all of you. And we were talking in the taxi just before about how um you know the danielle and i working together felt like quite a reunion in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. and as we got to know each other and and you know really kind of like it was a beautiful way to get to know someone I felt because it was like, we were able to, we just kept on saying all the time, like, Oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one who thought like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that often that is the case for those of us who are here to do soul work. Mm. It can feel like we are the black sheep of the family, which mm. sometimes we are. Mm. Um, and sometimes our whole family are black sheep, but, in my experience anyway it was kind of it felt from a young age that like i i had this like soul memory but i didn't understand mm -hmm. it and i was always just kind of like intoxicated by the mystery but feeling like a little bit alone because mm -hmm. i didn't i hadn't found the people yet right, right. do you resonate I with that fully understand yeah mm -hmm. and when i saw you it was like i recognize oh. you <laughs> even though we've like skyped and FaceTime and seeing each other over the phone, but it's, it's like your same. eyes. When yeah. I saw your eyes, oh, yeah, love. <laughs> oh, so I can see that there's a lot of people who are relating and resonating with this. Mm. And you know, I think this is the beauty of when we can gather like this in all corners of the world. Literally, Susanna says, <laughs> rainbow <laughs> sheeps, <Love> exactly, <laughs> rainbow sheeps, and. Yes, and Jody, I so hear you. I hope you. I find my own tribe like you. You know, in my experience, the more that we courageously, we were talking about this yesterday. Mm. It's like for a lot of people, both of us definitely. Uh, it it is scary to share the voice, share the creations, and let yourself be seen. Drop the mask, mm. and I find that the more we do that, yeah. it's like the more. Our people can recognize us yeah mm. it becomes easier to meet and connect it does mm. so okay so we've got a lot of people who oh janice's deck arrived five minutes <laughs> ago well perfect timing <laughs> i know some people have their physical deck with because you're alive with us i know others alive and your deck hasn't arrived for those I want to say, do not worry. Mm -hmm. um, there is two things I want to say to that. We were, we were saying that we, we, we would like you to, if you don't have your deck, you can always watch the playback, which we will send you. But we're thinking to just imagine like the deck's light body <laughs> and just hold it because this is like, you know, this, we put this in the, the cover. I wonder if you can see it, which says you are the Oracle. And this really is like a key message of this deck that we really wanted to come to, to really um, express, which is, you know, so often we can look at these tools of divination, which is what like Oracle cards are and any, any path we can look at it like it's this um, 
external validation or, mm. or it's this kind of, you know, this external, yeah. it's like a patriarchal kind of thing. However, I see our intention yeah. with these cards was that it's like, it's a mirror for what is in you. So it's mm. like, you'll find as you go through the deck that there is several different suits. So of course we did the, the, um, straight guidance cards, which were like the yes, no answers, because you know, sometimes you just want that. But <laughs> we also did other suits like inquiry cards. So an inquiry card is like this one here in Rama, which is where the soul journey card, which is where are you being called to journey to? And so it's like the inquiry question to you to, mm. to really, and it's called work your light. So it's like literally like working out your intuition, working out that connection to spirit. Yeah. Right. Love that. Then we had the action cards, which, um, what's the, that's, that's an action one. This one. Yeah. So yeah. Love this one. So pretty mm -hmm. that ended up being on the cover. So an action being devotion, mm. tune into the portal of your heart. So it's like an action, to take and then there are activation cards which is one which this one here is that one? this one here yeah let's have a look <laughs> pillar we pillar of light this. is a good one yeah one. so the pillar of light we adore this card it kind of we think it looks a bit like inner earth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and i mean the it says here your vibration is rising you are the oracle but how you use these cards is for this one. So you hold it on your heart and you say, this is the activation. I'll read it. I allow the light of the heavens and the light of the earth to flow through me. Now I activate the codes of remembering within my cells and chakras. I activate my system as a rainbow bridge between heaven and earth. Mm. Love that. Love that. And so the activation being, it's activating what's already in us. Mm. So this cellular memory thing, you know, many of us have been doing deep soul work for many lifetimes and the activation is the remembering. And this is the whole awakening process, mm. right? That's why it's called awakening. It's mm. remembering yeah. what we already know, what we've already experienced. So that's what the activation um, cards are it's the suit and then finally we've got the transmission cards and so a transmission one is like um yeah lemuria or kasha or pallades or mintakan yeah mintakan we're just finding it we know it's blue we were just playing with these so they're not they're all over the shovel oh, lemuria is lemuria. one let me get lemuria up so this we're obsessed with Lemuria as well. We are Lemurian sisters. So that's this card here. And it says here, creating heaven on earth, mm. it's happening. And so we, for the transmission, you hold the card on your heart and say, I hold the codes of Lemuria and believe that heaven really can be a place on earth. Mm. So the transmission being, it's like receiving the transmissions that are, that are, that are coming. Yeah. So it's really a very energetic deck. Uh, you know, you don't have to be super experienced to use mm -hmm. it and you can be at the same time. And so what we had envisaged with this deck is very much bringing the, the codes of light from the heavens, anchoring them into the inner temple of the heart and then connecting them with the earth as well. So there's cards like the keepers of the earth and mm -hmm. very earth based cards as well as the kind of more galactic. Yeah. So it was the infusion of seeding yeah. the light for, for this card. And you know, the title work your light, what that really means is it's about, uh, you know, just like if any relationship that we've got, if we want to, deepen it and develop it you've got to spend time with it mm -hmm. right yeah. and so when it's our intuition our spirit our soul if we want to if we want to deepen that relationship or you know if you want a six-pack <laughs> you got to do some sit-ups and so it's mm -hmm. like it's the equivalent of doing that for your inner temple connection mm -hmm. so that's really that was our intention wasn't yeah. it I feel like the because the deck is so unique and the imagery is so mm. diverse, it's going to be a different experience for each person too. Mm -hmm. So like your, your perception of awakening might be different than the next person who reads this mm. deck. It's all very catered to everyone. And there's so many layers as well. Mm. Like 
as we were putting them together, it was like literally like, you know, temples from all over the world yeah. and yeah, yeah, so many, th there was so much beautiful detail in there. So we journeyed through the cards. I feel we like did. <laughs> progressively. So when we started at the beginning, we were in one place and I mm. feel like we were trapped through Lemuria. It was so true. In outer space. And back we in really the were. <laughs> and it was kind of like, like I love the, the story of the, um, the inner temple card. Where is that? Yeah. Oh, that is it. <laughs> so this done. card, you know, the front, actually here's a story. The, the front cover was meant to be, we, mm -hmm. we wanted it to be a simple version of this. So just with the one woman, we, we love, we loved that card. We loved it. And then our, our publisher were like, we think, we think maybe something a bit more vibrant, a bit mm. more whatever. And we were like, what do we do? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but in the end, it was absolutely the right decision yeah. that we got to it. You put this right at the end. It was based yeah. on this card here in a temple, a simplified version of that. And this card, right. we had a different, right. we had a, a woman. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And then we got some feedback on that card and we we're like, oh, we it's true. It. We need to switch it. Yeah. And then I was doing my bhakti training, which mm. was basically like, it was last September. And I, I was literally like, I spent two weeks just like chanting to the divine. <laughs> <laughs> and you were working at the same time. Mm. And I, there was this one week where I just like kept on seeing this uh -huh. literally it was like the temples and then going up into this portal which was mm -hmm. in the center of the heart mm -hmm. it was like it's like the temple of our heart the temple of yeah. within us the inner temple and you know i don't even know if we spoke about it mm -hmm. i don't think we did i think mm -hmm. you just did it i'm like oh my god like i've literally been <laughs> saying that and it, yeah it was the last one i think we did too one. and i just was like one night okay i'm gonna do this image i have this idea for a cover possibly. And then we changed the inner temple card after we did this. Oh, so it was the very did last that, one I oh did. Oh my gosh. It just kind of happened serendipitously. I, guess. I love that. And that is what <laughs> the creative process is all about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to me, and I think we both feel this way, that the creative process, whether it's writing, creating mm -hmm. art, singing, arranging flowers, it's like what you do is you step into what's known as soul time, which mm -hmm. the Greeks called Kairos time, as opposed to Kronos time, chronological time. And, you know, that's where all healing happens. Mm -hmm. When you're working with, with a tool of divin divination, like Oracle, when we step, when, when we allow ourselves to step into that space, that's when the miracles can happen. That's where the guidance comes in. You know, there's yeah. the Akasha card where it's like the concept of Akasha is like the Akashic records where it, it exists in a different dimension and we see it as this library, but that's just because our minds need something to kind of wrap around mm -hmm. it. Whereas really Akasha exists. Yeah everywhere yeah. Yeah. yeah and right now and and it's about actually like us kind of like stepping like lifting the veil or rather being willing to mm -hmm. allow the veil to be lifted mm -hmm. everything's so subtle in the realm of intuition and I think mm -hmm. that is the case with creativity as well and that's why living a soulful heart-led mm -hmm. creative life requires courage and it's scary because you you need to have faith that something is going to be created out of nothing or mm -hmm. guidance is about to appear out of nothing. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I definitely felt that when I was creating and I kind of would try to pull space before I would work through the mm. images too. And when I did that, I felt like it flowed a lot easier. Mm. The pictures would come to me more or they come to me in like the least, like, yeah, uh, in randomly, shallow, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so true. Yeah. And that time space is just, and would Different. you say that, so with the creative process, because what I find with writing is when the actual writing actually is effortless, it's, mm -hmm. it's all the time in between that I'm resisting actually writing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're not when thinking. When you're like, like oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the hard bit. The actual yeah. creation is easy because yeah. it's not us doing it, right? Yeah, for sure. When you're in that space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In that funny. surrender space. So Lisa says she she finds it the same. Mm. Writing music, yeah, yeah, would imagine. That's such a meditative process in itself. It's so true. Amazing. 
Oh, Silva, thank, thank you for liking my outfit. <laughs> okay, so Aww. we love reading your messages. My heart is open. <laughs> so sweet. Okay, so mm, oh, would you choose a suit for a particular inquiry or use a whole deck each time? I think use a whole deck each time. Just trust, you know, just trust that, that, you know, and you can, another way of doing it if you want is you can just like open the deck. Just like some people do that with my books as well. Mm. It's just like, what do I need to hear today's form? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you could do either. So, okay. I kind of started describing what we're going to do today and then I got sidetracked, which I think <laughs> we both have a tendency to do. Um, <laughs> so, so for those who are, who are listening in the playback, um, you may be wanting to activate your deck and you've already got it, which is great. The deck activation we're going to be doing, uh, you only need to do once. However, you can do over and over again if you, if you choose to. We're also going to be calling in and doing um, a, an activation with the Council of Light. Very simple one. Uh, we really wanted to honor them because it mm. was definitely a meeting place at the beginning for us, which we connected to, which felt like the the energy that, that called us to create this yeah. deck, right? Yeah. So that's what we have mm. planned. And then after we do that, we are going to do some questions if, if you guys have any it can be about the creative process it could be about um the deck or just any yeah. question you want how to speak with a canadian accent maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever you want mm -hmm. okay cool so again just to reiterate if you've jo just joined if you don't have your deck don't worry mm -hmm. um just Imagine that you've got your deck with you. If you want to watch the playback again, which you will all be sent, you can um, do it again physically, but it's not necessary. Like you can, you can just hold it in your heart. Okay. Oh, Beth's cards just arrived. It's so amazing. All these amazing. Decks are it's too. amazing. Um, okay. So I think, should we share the screen? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so Lisa said, I may have to leave partway through. If so will I be able to rewatch later? Yes, you'll be sent it. I'm pretty sure tomorrow. Whitney's deck arrived 15 minutes ago. Amazing. Nice. Marissa's cards haven't arrived, but I'm holding the, the app on my phone. I That's a great that. idea. <laughs> oh. And we're actually, um, the, the app as well, we've been making some changes visually mm -hmm. too. So, um, we'll announce that when, when they're updated. So you can update the app because um, it'll make, be even prettier than it already is. Um, okay. So let me see how I share my screen. Uh, I think if I go like this. Okay, I just want to make sure I can see the comments. Will there be an app for Android? That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. Linz, if you know the answer, um, pop the answer below. If not, um, we'll have to ask Hey House that. Hello from Italy. Yay. Okay, <laughs> cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sophie said mine had the yes card on top. <laughs> I've noticed that. I love that. That was the easiest copy to write. It was just like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> love it. Okay, cool. So, okay. So I'll just invite everyone to just, even if you happen to be at work and you're pretending that you're not working right now, but if you're at home, just, take a moment to just get really comfy because I want to invite us to really step into that soul space that we spoke about before. So I invite you to just put your feet flat on the ground, sit, settle into your chair and just slow down your breathing, put your hand on your heart and one on your belly if that feels good and 
close your eyes gently, take a deep breath in, and breathe out. In the center of your heart, imagine a beautiful flower and just trust whichever flower arrives in, in your heart. Just notice what color it is, what type of flower. In some way, this represents the essence of who you are at soul level. Breathe in. And breathe out. And as you breathe really gently, allow yourself to be held by the energy Danielle and I are holding you in. Imagine your heart just opening that beautiful flower, petal by petal, courageously, deeply breathe in. Imagine yourself returning to the inner temple within you and in the center of that heart, imagine a beautiful, in the center of that flower, imagine a beautiful light. Almost like a galaxy. It's as if in the center of your heart you have a portal into the temple of your own heart and soul. Breathe in. Breathe out. And invite this part of you to really step forward now. Part of you that is connected to your cosmic self, your ancient self, your wise self. Breathe in. Breathe out. The part of you that knows, the part of you that is already the oracle, the part of you that is constantly whispering, even if it might be very, very softly and gently, trusting that that part of you brought you to be on this call or watching this playback video. Breathe in. Inviting the part of you that's ancient and wise to remember the multifaceted nature of who you are. The part of you that is really longing and ready to be seen. The part of you that's courageous intuitive breathe in breathe out now really inviting this part of you to step forward now i'm gonna invite us all to keep our hands on our heart taking a breath here bringing your hands to prayer and raising them up past your third eye, above your head. Really feeling the connection to the heavens above. And then with your next breath, imagining your hands and actually moving your hands so they open wide around your body. Bringing them down to your face chakra, connecting with the earth, the keepers of the earth. Recognizing that Earth is galactic and cosmic too. Feeling this connection between the cosmic heavens, the light of our star ancestors, even our star heritage, those of us who are, all of us who are star seeds at heart. Allowing yourself to really see the light. All has journeyed between lives. Breathe in. Breathe out. Sending that memory to the earth. Sending your connection with the council of light, those that gave your own personal mission this life to the earth, to the center of the earth. Breathe in. Allowing yourself to be fully here on the planet. Noticing any longings for home and realizing that we can find home here on earth too. Breathe in. Ah.
bringing your hands up to your heart, taking a breath here, allowing your heart to be the anchor of the heavens and the earth. In so many traditions, we see the cross symbol, which is really the axis of the horizontal and the vertical, the heaven, the earth. One of my favorite quotes goes along this line, which is, may your heart always be in heaven and your feet firmly on the ground. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feeling the presence of all that have gathered for this oracle activation both live if you're listening live and then also those who are listening on playback knowing that in kairos time in soul time we are all together collectively sharing a breath and really calling in the courage and strength and encouragement of all of those who are on this call knowing that the more we honor our intuition the more we honor our voice the more we share our voice the more we allow ourselves to be seen and remember our ancient wisdom the easier it is for others to do the same that there is more than enough room for us all to do this more than enough room for us all to create for us all to sing, for us all to dance, for us all to write. Really feeling this connection with your own inner temple and as you do, feeling deeply connected to all of those on the call. Returning home to this place, knowing that you can return to this place with your breath anytime, to the inner temple, to the portal of your heart. Breathe in, breathe out. Oh. Breathe in, breathe out. Oh. Now in your own time, I invite you to gently open your eyes. And what we're doing now is we're going to, sh I want you to just let me know that you can see the screen ahead, which says Oracle Attunement. Okay, great. So what, and can you also see Danielle and my face or? Yes. Okay. Yes. You can see both. Okay, great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step you through the Oracle Attunement. So for everyone who has their deck, I want you to take it now. And for those who don't, imagine that you've got it there. Okay. And so we're going to talk you through it. Do you want to instruct them? So if we go to page 12. If you have your book, yes. you can read along. Yeah. If not, you can just be here with us. All right. So I can read this part here. For sure. Yeah. So the following attunement is a ritual for you to connect with and attune to your Oracle deck at soul level. You can do this attunement once, or if you feel called, you can do it each time you use the cards. So take your work your light Oracle box and hold it to your root chakra. So I'm going to stand and yeah. do it. So if okay. anyone, if you can stand, stand, but you don't have to, you can imagine that. And then Danielle and I are going to say it out loud and okay. we're going to read from the screen. So we invite you to read along with us mm -hmm. because, you know, the thing about our sound current when we share our voices, there's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah. And then we do it when we do it all together, it's like it multiplies. Yeah. So take your Oracle deck and place it at your root chakra, which we were just with. This is the connection to the earth, right? Mm. Okay, and we say together, I call upon the wisdom keepers of the earth, wise beings who have walked before me, and the intelligence of the sentient beings of planet earth. May these cards be activated with clear and grounded guidance and simple action. May they beat all who come into contact with them home to the effortless rhythm of you, and our universal, universal mother. mother. 
feeling that connection with the mother, thanking her for the holding, recognizing that when we allow ourselves to, in a way, you have two mothers, first the biological and then the mother, the mother earth, we realize that we don't have to look to other people to hold us because we know that we are all ready. Okay. Yeah. So then we'll move to. No, is that working? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So then we bring the oracle deck to the heart, right? Yes. Can share a breath here. Together we say, I activate the portal of my heart and the heart of humanity. May these cards act as doorways to the wisdom deep within the temple of my heart. May they always reveal the heart's deepest, purest, and most potent prayers and the soul's highest callings for the good of all. And bringing the deck to just above your head. And I'm going to sit down for this. So this is where the soul chakra is, which is our connection to the, to the heavens. Our soul chakra is unique to us. And it's the light of spirit, the light of the councils of light mm. that flows through us and through the unique multifacetedness of our soul. And together we say, I, I activate, activate the realm of the soul to envelop me with sacred space each time these cards are used. May they allow all who come into contact with them to receive whatever is for the highest good of their soul and the soul of all things. May each person who comes into contact with these cards develop an intimate relationship with their own soul and the, the soul, universe. universe. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, amazing. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. So now we really want to introduce you to the councils of light, which was, you know, I feel like, well, I, I know I had this memory of actually like receiving my mission this life. I had a regression when I was 21 and it was like, I believe that there is a whole, I wrote about this in Light is a New Black, that there was this whole group of us who received this mission for this time. And I know you were there. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people on the Zoom call were as well. And to me, why don't you read about the councils of light and what, who they are to us? And this card too was one of my favorite ones to create because I know we could have added a lot of amazing beings mm. into this collective image, but we added this this nine for now. And oh, okay. Yeah, they resonated most yeah. with us, but it was hard to choose, wasn't it? Yeah, the divine orchestration. Mm -hmm. So the Council of Light is a team of benevolent beings who are here to assist the raising of consciousness of the planet. They are here to help you achieve your soul mission and are guiding you every step of the way. However, because we live in a world where free will reigns, they cannot help you without your permission. If you would like their assistance, it is time to ask them. They can help with all kinds of requests. Nothing is too big or too small. They are willing and ready to step in and get to work. Mm -hmm. What would you like help with? What tasks would you like to delegate to them? The Council of Light is a team of ascended masters, light beings, angels, and guides devoted to the rising of Earth and all humanity. If you are a light worker, it is from them that you receive your personal mission. Like a spirit world united nations, they want to thank you so much for doing this work and devoting your life to uplifting the planet. Pray to them for clarity and guidance regarding your personal mission. Put in your requests and let them get to work. Mm, beautiful. I love that. So nice. And so together, we, if you have your deck, you can find the Council of Light card, which is 
the image behind um, with all the ascended masters. So we'll just wait mm. like a, a minute for people to find that card because it's nice to actually activate that card. So yeah, we'll just wait a little bit for you guys to do that. And if your cards aren't there, again, it's not necessary. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to each hold the card to our heart and say together, Council of Light, I'm ready to receive your help for fulfilling my personal Dharmic mission. Thank you for guiding me with clarity every step of the way and for sending me helpers and experiences that delight my mind, body, and soul. Oh, yes. I think that bit was important to us because it's so common for those who are here, who, who long to serve, to kind of do it in a way that causes them to suffer, right? Mm -hmm. So this is not the lifetime for that, I really feel. So yeah, you know, when we're, when we're calling in like, may I be used, may I be used, add in, in a way that delights my mind, body, and soul. Ah, oh, amazing. Okay. So. If you haven't, if your eyes are closed, just begin to open them. And I think that we will finish, we'll, we'll seal this energy by putting our hand on our heart and one on our belly. And then together we'll do three OMs and then Shanti, 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 which means peace, peace, peace. So if you sing along with us. Om. Deck activation complete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I hope you feel really good. I feel really good over yeah. here. That was really yeah. nice to sing with you. Yeah. Made me think of ancient Egypt. <laughs> oh, yay. We love you. Thank you so, Thank much, you. so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> So, what does it, should we do the Om Shanti before spreading out the cards? Mm -hmm. You totally can. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that um, when we chant, it's not about what our voice sounds like. It's like it's actually just allowing the voice of our heart to come forth. And so that's a great way. It's a great mm -hmm. ritual you can do before you're doing a reading for someone else, a great way to connect with them if you're doing professional readings or just for friends, um, because again, it's a, it's just a simple ritual to get you out of the head space, the chronological time space, the chronos time and into the soul time, the soul mm. space. Um, so someone said that like, how often do we use the cards? Mm. Good question. Um, I've, cause I knew I've been using them a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think for me, I tend to, I'll do like a, a big, like a, cause there's so many different spreads in here and you know, obviously there's loads of different spreads in every deck and classic ones as well. But I'll normally do like 
the Celtic or Cosmic Cross like mm. once every like three months yeah. roughly yeah. for like a bigger reading. And then I'd say a couple times a day I'll do like a one card draw. A one card. Yeah, yeah I'm, I tend to yeah. do the one card yeah. draws. It's a good way to start the day. Too. Yeah. yeah. In the morning, I have my deck next to my bed and I'll have wake up and go oh what's the thing for today what's the thing for today yeah that's really mm -hmm. cool i find also like you know say if i'm doing like a call like this or um if i've got a client session if i'm doing a reading or teaching or you know even meeting someone and you know you're gonna have to have a conversation or whatever mm -hmm. i'll often like pull a card and be like oh that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but you can also use this particular deck as a as a way of um as a form of spiritual practice mm -hmm. particularly if you get the um the inquiry cards like you can just journal on the inquiry prompt prompts it's another way of just going in how many cards to pull as a beginner if, as well if to do it daily i mean I, I feel like the one card draws are good yeah. because you kind of get to know that card without the complexity of doing a full spread yet. It's kind of like getting to know each individual card, but then you can kind of add do three cards and then mm. do the spreads from the book. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. And I mean, I suppose another way to do it is you could literally um, just start with a card a day. Like you yeah, don't yeah. even need to pull it, but just have your deck and be like, okay, cool. I'm going to start with this first card mm. And I'm going to study it. And okay, so this one is Pallades, which is a whole nother planet. That's mm. pretty mm. in depth, right? And it says here, double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. And you can see in here, like, there's so many different layers to it. And so it's like studying the card. And, mm. you know, when I was taught um, giving in intuitive readings, I was taught as well that I could give an intuitive reading just by looking at the wall. And because it is about going into that heart space, that soul space, and just kind of like almost like becoming one with the wall and allowing it to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Same thing if you're doing a reading with someone in front of you. Same thing. It's like what is wanting to be mm -hmm. seen here? Mm -hmm. You know, it might be someone just like a beautiful necklace and it's like, oh, wow, that reminds me. I, I'm, I'm drawn to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Same thing with the cards. It's like being curious as to all the different details and like you said before everyone will see different things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about when we're saying you are the oracle because we all yeah yeah we all there are just it's another divination tool there's lots of hidden sort of archetypes and symbols that we've mm -hmm. woven into the imagery so you might see certain things that aren't obvious at first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for the Pleiades card, for example, mm -hmm. to show the constellation is actually in the background. It mm -hmm. might not be as obvious at first, but I, yeah, that's the real constellation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Like I love that. Yeah. I reckon, why don't you talk about some of the cards that have those deeper um, layers yeah. that we chose? Like Lemuria, for mm -hmm. instance. This was like one of the first cards I feel like we really, yeah. like, aha. Had we were like, aha yes. <laughs> And when I think of Lemuria, I see, and I know Rebecca does as well, mm. lots of turquoise, glowing waters, and lush forests, and mountains, and even crystals, like crystalline structures. So we really wanted to encapsulate that in this image. It was so important mm. to kind of have those, because I feel like they are like awakening archetype symbols mm. just by looking at them. Mm. It kind of helps with that awakening process a little mm. bit. So, yeah. It's that? so true. Yeah. yeah. And I was saying to you today and Amy, who we were with, I was in Germany at the Angel Congress, like an event um, on the weekend. And I did one card readings of the deck. And I did about a hundred, like quite quickly. And 50% of them, I got the Lemuria card. And so, you know, if you're leading a group, if you're doing a workshop, if you're, um, even you know if you're if you're creating something sometimes the card can show the theme of the day and just like kind of like give details into the group as a whole mm -hmm. so it's yeah so interesting mm -hmm. let's see here now this akasha one mm -hmm. all right so this one is pretty detailed and some of the things that we were going into with this image 
on it. Well, you see the Sphinx, first mm -hmm. of all. And so the Sphinx, going back to the story of Akasha, being also known as the Hall of Records or the Great Hall of Records, there are theories that it exists somewhere beneath the Sphinx. It's connected to the Sphinx. So if you look really closely, there's a little doorway in the Sphinx there, which kind of could go there. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's ethereal. So it's supposedly in the sky. You know, it's the Sanskrit word for that is like it's sky, heaven, or ether. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just adding the clouds there to make it look a little bit more mm. otherworldly. And I think know. that's a really good point of when we're creating the deck. And because I'm actually thinking now, yeah, we didn't put it in the book, but I think actually meditating, because mm. what we really wanted, just because it's our normal style, like my work's very activating, so is yours. It was all about, we wanted each card to be like a, like a portal, mm. which I, 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 I think most of them actually are. Yeah. Where So if you wanted to work a little bit more with the Akashic Records or Akasha, mm. even ancient Egypt, mm. meditate on each of the cards. Because, you know, as we were creating them, what we were doing was literally infusing, you know, like every experience that we've had at sacred sites, at, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that we had seen. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it was like, it was amazing when we were creating it that I was doing the chanting at the same time because I was like so in that yeah. space and yeah. you're like, mur, 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 mur. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably, yeah, yeah. that happened. Because we were talking about actually, we're doing we might continue doing um, projects together and maybe we'll actually visit places together and yes. meditate together this time rather than separate. I mean, that was amazing because we were doing it separately, but it was like identical, mm -hmm. like what we both saw the same things. And that was what was so uncanny, but yeah. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Imagine what could happen if we uh, go to the real spots. <laughs> together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one. what's the difference between Mintakan and Atlantis oh, oh good question I can <laughs> Mintakan is is uh it's it's a soul group a planet um also known as Artubia um it's thought to have existed in Orion's belt and it's my belief and there is a lot written about it that Mintakans were some of the first to come to earth actually to set up Lemuria, which was this like heaven on earth concept. And so Mintakans very much often have like this longing for home without knowing where home is, this yearning for um, like the tribe and find, finding their people and just kind of like feeling a little bit like out of place sometimes because of this yearning for home. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when they came to earth and created, or, or I don't think they were the only ones that created it, but were part of the Lemuria project to, mm -hmm. to set up. It was like, I think Lemuria was quite similar to that home yeah. planet. Yeah. And, you know, there is, in my experience, I, I can't, I, I do, I'm not sure if it still exists. I feel like a lot of Mintakans then went elsewhere to other what, Pleiades, Syria, mm -hmm. et cetera, Andromeda. And yeah, and so I'm not sure if the planet exists still, mm -hmm. but I do find when I did, because I did for um, probably about four years, I did like like a lot of soul soul um, soul readings, like back to planets of origin, etc. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of Mintakans, and a lot of Mintakans they've had they've got this like real beautiful affinity to that crystal clear water, mm -hmm. which I think is very Lemurian yes. as well. Yes, it's connected. Mm -hmm. I feel it must be connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then Atlantis being a lost land. So Lemuria existed uh, before and then during Atlantis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is thought that uh, uh, Lemuria was like more Pacific area, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it's also known as the continent of Mu, M-U, which is like mother. Mm -hmm. um, and then Atlantis came and it overlapped. And I believe a lot of... Lemurians went to Atlantis. Some then went went into the water, like mm -hmm. into the mer, as mer people, and then others went underground. Right? Yeah. Is that yeah. your? I yeah. Think so yeah, mm. around the time of the great flood. So before that, 
mm-hmm. the documented one. Mm. I think. And a lot of uh, so with Atlantis, we didn't do an Atlantis card, did we? How odd. We can next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Atlantis, I think, was like a period of so that's more you know more Atlantic, more um, a lot of people say. And a lot of channel materials say like it's like Greece and even Tenerife, which yes, we were very yes, spontaneously yes. there together the yeah. last week. Um, and yeah, and so those times being like like quite high technology, right? Mm-hmm. So high technology and places they became very advanced very quickly, I think, mm-hmm. to their dem- demise, I guess, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. possibly. Mm. And I've read yeah. quite a bit of stuff where they say something about America to do with the technology mm. and like, as if like mm. what is happening there now is almost like a, I don't know the word for it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think that's definitely an area I'd like to mm-hmm. delve more. I think we yeah. should do a card of that. Yeah, we should. Yes. When we were in Tenerife, yeah. there's that story. Yeah. There's like a local legend that one of the villages on the island is like one of the last remnants of where the the Atlanteans were, mm-hmm. so the people that live there identify as Atlantean. It, yeah, so cool, <laughs> so cool. This is yeah. this is the stuff that like we're like geek <laughs> out over. And when we met, we we're like, oh my god, we're like kind of like conspiracy theory because we're like cosmic <laughs> geeks. <laughs> it's true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Hannah says a description of Mintakans is my son who loves dolphins and mermaids. Oh. Yes, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, Maria says, how can we use the transmission cards? So mm. just follow the book, Maria. Um, each of the transmission cards um, has a transmission. So let me just go to one. Um, so for example, the Akasha one, or, well, you know, let's go Pallades actually. Mm-hmm. That might be a good one because we did some transmission before. So the Palladian card is like double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. The Palladians are a group of star beings dedicated to raising the vibration of the planet and sharing new consciousness through creations and technologies. They have been incarnating on earth since near the beginning of humanity. You are a soul who has a double mission to grow at soul level and to raise the vibration of the planet. If you have been called to write, speak or channel, this is your sign to keep doing it. Your work is divinely guided of all of the souls. Palladians uh, communicate the most um, and perhaps you've already started channeling some of this work into the third dimension. So it's like whether it's writing or speaking or like, um, yeah. I don't know, like creating or um, uh, so it's thank you for doing your part in this great plan. Your presence and unique light is needed. So with your, um, so with the Palladian card, the transmission here is holding the, the card to your heart and say, I call upon Palladian consciousness of the highest realms and highest good of humanity to work through me. Let me be a channel for only the purest light of the essence of source. Let me channel in a way that also serves me. Mm. So if you pull, pull this card, for example, this particular transmission card, you can, like we said before, meditate on the Palladians. You can research them or you can really inquire into like how am I being called to channel how am I being called to create how am I being called to express myself how am I being called to to uplift the planet through my creations Mm -hmm. um Laura says I feel overwhelmed with the beauty of these cards they've made me cry and open up all at once oh that's so sweet Mm -hmm. Um, can you list who is in the Council of Light? Why don't you list who is there? I think there's more, but these were the ones that presented themselves. And these are some of the ones that people see together usually, Mm. like we're together, which is really interesting. So we have El Moria over here and Katumi over here, Kuan Yin. Then we have uh, Mother of Nazareth, right? Mm. Mary, Mary. Buddha. Black Madonna, there Mary, Mother Mary here, Oshun, and then Jesus. Mm. Yeah, put them all together. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so someone said, Lauren says, are they all ascended masters part of the Council of Light? Yeah, that's what I see them as. Yeah. Yeah. Could could a pendulum assist with drawing out cards? Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, so I'll I'll demonstrate that now. I'll just get my dresses underneath you. That's okay. Um, So this is my pendulum. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> so I'm going to spread the cards out in front, like down here, right? Um, wonder if you're going to be able to see that. Yeah, you could probably see that. So I'm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand over, my hand over, go like that. So hopefully you can see it. So I've spread the deck, and so I'm going to go give me a yes. That's a yes. Give me a no. And so I'm going to just spread my hand and just basically go, is it this card? Is it this card? Is it this card? Mm. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I need to spread this out. Okay, oh, I think it's there. in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of difficult to do. So now we're down to a final three. This one. So that was a yes. So then the card we got is mirror. So that's how you would you know, the inquiry is who or what is triggering you. So maybe that's for someone on the call. Um so yeah so of course you can use the pendulum and i think i love that you mentioned that because it's again you are the oracle you will be guided to your own unique way of using the cards Mm -hmm. while we've got some sample spreads and sample ways of using them you can of course like just ad lib lib them yourself you can also combine um decks together if you want like if you wanted to do your star child oracle Mm -hmm. with this you could mix them all up if you want um you're the authority on this um okay so if there is anyone else who Let's have a look at these questions. Okay, Dee says, is there a quick way of accessing each card's meaning in the book? Yeah, no, I think that was my fault. I stuffed that up. I'm thinking of maybe like for the reprint going alphabetical, but yeah, we didn't do that. Actually, there is a quick way Mm -hmm. and that is through the contents. So at the front of the book in the contents, it goes through each of the suits and so and it says which page they're on. So that is the quickest way. Um, ever since, Kathleen says, ever since I was a small child, I felt that I meant to do something big and special. I guess you could say I felt I had a big purpose in this life but didn't know what it is, but don't know how to articulate it into words, the particular feeling, the pull. Does this, that make sense? How would you describe this um, sensation feeling? Mm. Well, well, first Mm. of all, do you relate? Yeah. I I would describe this feeling, this sensation as like a yearning, a longing, a remembering. And, you know, I think that is the language of the soul. It's, 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 it's the yearning, isn't it? Mm. It's like being Mm -hmm. pulled and called. And I know I certainly felt it from a young age and it really stressed me out actually, because Mm. I, I just like so desperately wanted to find the thing. Right. Do you relate? Yeah. Like a a constant sense of anticipation. Mm -hmm. I had that since I was a little girl too. Yeah. Yeah. And did you have the, like the times running out kind of feeling like I got to find it. I got to find it. I guess I had these moments in between as I got older that kind of, Mm. I had those aha moments. Okay. Mm. I'm getting closer to the answer, Mm. you know, slowly but surely, I Mm. think. And I guess it's remembering yourself and coming into yourself and Mm. connecting with your heart and Mm. takes time sometimes. When did you start doing your art like in full? In full. I would have to say probably about five or six years ago after I quit my last job. Yeah. I was teaching 
full time, like teaching elementary school. I was teaching art and French immersion and I was just not happy in that job. Mm. So I was doing art on the side, kind of as my own form of meditation and healing. And then mm. eventually it just kind of rolled into this job. Mm. I made a tarot deck and mm. now, mm. now I'm here. With Yay. <laughs> and was so with that would have been like around 2012 then, right? Yeah. 11, 11 yeah, 2012. 2012. See, that was the same as me. I started my, yeah, I, I had my like crumbling 2011, 2012 was when I started my business, like right. properly. I'd been training for so long yeah. and doing it yeah. on the side, but it was just like, you got to do it now. I have a feeling. Yeah. And I think that there is something about that, that 2012 thing with the, oh my gosh, time's running out, time's running out, time's running out. And, you know, something I want to meditate more on is like the 20, 2020, 2021, 2022 mm -hmm. thing. Cause mm -hmm. I think there's like the next bit is coming, right? Mm -hmm. We can mm. feel it now. I feel like it's yeah. getting stronger and more potent. And mm -hmm. It's exciting too. It's exciting. Know, it's really exciting. Yeah. And it's like, it does feel a little bit like, um, like things are moving very quickly. Yes. And mm. if we resist it, and it, of course we're all going to resist it because we're human. Like you're mm -hmm. not going to be mm -hmm. like, yes, just let's, let's <laughs> do this. But the resistance, like, until we like release it, then it's kind of like phew, things can move quickly, but it's mm. very painful. The more we resist it. Yeah. It's like yeah. harder to maybe. Yeah. It's almost like karma and time is accelerating. Everything's going so fast. <laughs> awesome. I, I feel like for me, like sometimes a month feels, yeah. you know, like two days. <laughs> totally. Totally. Okay. So, um, or Dee's answered that question. Philippa mm -hmm. says, hi, are the cards structured in a way that connects to the traditional tarot? If not, how did you get inspired to create this deck? I can't wait to get it. I love the imagery and whimsical vibes of it. So there's a couple of cards in the deck that draw on the tarot. Mm -hmm. So like we've got the priestess. Let's mm -hmm. get that. The, I think the crumbling is the tower yeah. card, isn't it? Yeah, so that this is based on the tower card in the tarot deck, which, you know, actually I, I got that card in 2011 yeah. over and over and over again. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. But it was the best card right. ever, yeah. ever. As you yeah. can see here, it's like, it's scary. It's kind of lightning. It's like, ah, but through here, if you allow yourself to surrender to what's falling away, to the crumbling. It's the beautiful flowers. It's, it's what's rising and blooming within you. So that's a traditional it. card. Another traditional one is the, the priestess. Do you want to talk a bit to this one? Yeah, this is, this was one of my favorite cards to make, I think. Mm, because I see it's the, one of our favorites. Yeah. We see the priestess in so many deities mm. and goddesses and figures. So I was kind of focusing on Isis and Sekhmet in this one. I see them as two very powerful goddesses and all encapsulating and Isis being like the goddess of 10,000 names. I think she represents a lot of other priestesses and goddesses. So yeah, I tried to, mm. tried to put her in there. Yeah. yeah. Stunning. And um, so the, the call to action here, the inquiry is how you being called to step up and lead. Yeah. So I love that. Um, I don't think if there's any other ones that are classic to deck. I think yeah, they were the main unique, ones. Very yeah. unique titles that Rebecca came up with. Yeah, themes. The yeah, the all the the titles were just through meditation, through inner experiences, through um, yeah, just like we were just trying to activate, package up the activation energy. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I mean, it's called work your light so that when we're when something booming in us, we can, we can let it like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an energetic deck mm. where it's like, we, we wanted to like help move energy, help allow us all when we use it to really hear the intuition. And so it's not so much about like, um, I mean, you can use it as prediction, but it's more about like inner certainty mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. inner movement and mm -hmm. action. Yeah. And it's, for me, it's very deep. 
Like when I mm. use this deck, I'm, I feel like I'm connecting to past lives and mm. deeper seated memories that maybe haven't come up yet and that they help me do that. So, mm. which is why it'll be unique for each person too. Exactly. Yeah. And cause we were, yeah. we were working a lot with that concept of like seeding the light. So, mm. so not just kind of like it being all like we're light and air, you know, <laughs> like there is some dark cards mm. in here. It's like, trust the niggle, right? So part of it. Who feels like that a lot of the time? Oh my God. That's when we ignore the intuition, which is human. Um, this card, the initiation, this is like, you know, this is, this is such a big, big topic, which is mm-hmm. about like the way we grow is through, through, you know, we're having to shed our skin and in, in mm-hmm. the shamanic tradition, in my shamanic training, we learn about the, the serpent, the snake being um, of the south direction and praying to the, to the serpent to uh, help us shed our skin mm. all at once mm. rather than just little by little by little by little. Yeah, Sophie says, wow. I love the niggle card. I learnt that lesson a hard way. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Haven't we Me all? Too. I think <laughs> we all have. Um, yeah, so I got Marissa says I got get grounded twice over. Oh my gosh, it's annoying when we get that card, isn't it? It's like I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> oh my gosh. So great. Well, I think I think that's probably um yeah, I think we've answered most of the questions. I just both of us wanted to really just say thank you so much for um wanting to be here with us for thank you so much for for pre-ordering the deck and ordering the deck it um makes us so um i don't know it's just so surreal to to know that this creation is out in the world and um our both of our deepest yearnings like we were talking before is to to support in any way that we can and to um i think help people connect with that ancient wisdom yeah. within right yeah so within. we share that yeah so that's our deepest heart's mm-hmm. deepest wish and prayer for all of you guys um someone said how yeah. can we find you guys i mean what's your url uh i have my art website yeah which is just danielle noel.art mm-hmm. or i'm on instagram just star child tarot yeah yeah cool and then i'm rebecca campbell.me and i'm rebecca thoughts on instagram um but yeah so we um we will hopefully be creating some more things together and we're um yeah just really happy to have been able to hold this space to help you activate your deck and um yeah we love you very much and Aww. wherever you are we're just wishing you the best day and yeah thanks you guys oh <laughs> so lovely oh and i want to turn it off because there's so many <laughs> nice people She's so sweet mm, so sweet thank you mm. Mwah. bye guys <laughs>